So if you've been following for a while, you probably already know that we're out here lobster fishing today, sharing our day with you. But if you're new to the page, we're actually lobster fishermen here in Maine. We have 400 traps that we haul each day. We take you behind the scenes, share any interesting catches, and share some info on things we do to keep the fishery sustainable. So we're doing like a daily vlog style video where we haul 400 traps each day. And I thought it'd be fun to start each daily vlog by answering some of your questions from the last video. So in the last one, YouTube punks actually asked how the trap works. Wanted to show you kind of the process. So they're pretty simple really. We have a series of heads. The farther they go in each head, the harder it is for them to get back out. So the first heads are right here in the front of the traps where the bait is. So they climb in, they eat the bait right here in the front. After they eat the bait, they try to get away from it. So they'll actually crawl towards the back of the trap through another series of heads. And once they're in the back of the trap, they're stuck. So back here, we have some vents. These are escape vents. These are a big part of what keeps the fishery sustainable. These serve two purposes. They'll let the crabs out and the short lobsters out. So these kind of act like filters for us so we don't have to handle as many lobsters. Uh, these will kind of let the small ones go before we even haul them up. There's that many less lobsters we have to handle. Same with the crabs. But they also are held in with biodegradable hog meat. So in the rare event a trap is lost, these will actually rust away and open up let everything in the trap out and at that point the trap will just become habitat. Another interesting way to look at a trap is that it's essentially just a farm because we fill it full of bait, we keep them in the ocean all the time, we don't make money unless they have bait in them. So our job is basically to keep bait in our traps which is convenient for the lobsters especially the shorts, the eggers and the oversize because they have free food. Not only free food but they have protection as well so once they climb in the trap they can eat for free they have all kinds of free bait. They have protection from any big fish or seals or anything on the outside while they're inside the trap. They can eat all they want. They climb to the back of the trap. A lot of them actually will just climb right back out of the trap. But the ones that do climb to the back will either climb out through the vents or if they're punch tails, beggars, oversized shorts, we'll just haul them up, let them go, and they'll do it again. So there's thousands and thousands of traps all over the ocean that are always full of bait, that are constantly feeding the young, feeding the breeders, we're only keeping a very small slot out of what the traps catch. So that is one of many reasons that the fishery is so sustainable. If you want to learn more, stick around. We'll actually take you back to the beginning of today, or we'll do the daily vlog for the day. So this is where the morning actually starts. So after we're packed up, I'm just waiting for Keith to pick me up. And so I'm all packed up, waiting for Keith to pick me up. by checking the weather and uh why are you whispering oh uh, yeah, i don't know so now that we're in the truck we usually start the morning by checking the weather and this time of the morning is actually the hardest part of the morning is getting from the bed to the boat once you get to the boat we're good but getting from the bed to the boat we look for every excuse we can not to go especially when the fishing's tough I can get some excuses too. We can find, we can get creative with the excuses. We can. So the first search for excuses is the weather. And pardon my voice and my throat. I got a cold. But so the first check is letting us down. We got 14 knots, which isn't a ton of wind. They are calling for a little bit of wind though. There's potential for an excuse. They're calling for 15 to 20 this morning. We do have some sea left over though, so it is going to be kind of nasty. We had a lot of wind yesterday. Five to eight foot sea, so. So step two is pick Griffin up. What up? <laughs> I saw some comments in the last video, people wondering how we're videoing these because you can see all three of us in frame. Everybody's like, who's running the camera? Griffin, we got a full-time cameraman now. We don't have a ton of wind this morning, but we got a sea left over from wind that we had yesterday. The sea makes it hard right now. It's a lot deeper than a chop. You can feel it a lot more when you're going 14, 15 knots. Then you get a chop. Makes for a visible ride. But now that we're here, it should be an all right day. The sun will get up. Things will get a little easier. That ride sucked. Is it 
thought it ends up getting caught. We also got Spongebob. Real life Spongebob. Oh, that's actually so revolting. Good. Nice egg here. Full of eggs, brand new ones. This is the time of year they push them out onto their tail. We start seeing lots of eggers between now and February. She has no notch. We'll give her a notch if you do. That signifies she's a breeder to future fishermen. She's caught down the road. Let's them know that she can't be kept. And don't tell them in the shorts, but we don't actually give a snack to every lobster we let go. I did this one time as a joke on the shorts, and now I can't let one go without them yelling at me in the comments. So now it's become a thing where every notch every punch tail we do or every barnacle cleaning we do we gotta send them back with a snack what happened Keith I went I slipped <laughs> fell into the holding tank for the lobsters so now the rest of the day <laughs> I've got one wet foot I don't know if this Probably soaked every bit of her up. Yeah. <laughs> Debating on whether it's ducking my other foot in and keeping her out. <laughs> this ain't good. We got a key. This goes back to the prank course from last year. He's either just trying to scare us or he's actually pranked us. We had a little prank war last year with another fisherman, but it kept escalating to the point we had padlocks and keys involved. I don't know if he's just trying to scare us or if we've actually been pranked, but we'll see. It feels kind of heavy. That's not even a joke either. Oh, nice. Plus, it's just my paranoia getting tested. I guess he was just trying to scare us. I guess he was just trying to scare us, but it, it definitely didn't work. It didn't scare us one bit. Got a huge egger, big one. Look at all her eggs. Probably 40,000 eggs. We've been doing a new series where we see what they can crush. The other day we did carrots. They have no problem crushing a carrot. I don't think the pincher claw can do it. Oh, I am wrong. Pincher claw can also cut a carrot. Today we're gonna see if they can crush an apple. An apple might be tricky. It's big to fit in her claw. It might take a couple tries. There you go. There's one. Here you go, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Could've given you a heads up, I might've caught it. <laughs> the apple was no challenge for her. Since she's full of eggs, she's got no notch. We're gonna give her a notch. That just signifies that she's a breeder. Wow. <laughs> a little squeaky this morning. I got a cold. Tried my best. We're giving her a notch. That signifies that she's a breeder to future fishermen. Let's them know that she can't be kept if she's caught in the future when she doesn't have eggs. We're gonna give her a snack. I guess she's not gonna let the apple go. She's taking the apple with her too. And a lot of people ask why I throw them on their back. And it's just to protect their eggs from the impact on the water. It was kind of passed down from my grandfather and great grandfather. That's how they always released them. They always released them actually. They would slow right down and let them go real slow. But we just toss them on their back so that way their belly doesn't hit right on the water. The eggs are very secure. We did a video in the past on them actually putting the hose on them just to demonstrate what they look like in the water. But the eggs are very sticky. They are very secure, but it's just a habit that I've gotten into. Throw them on their back. Why not add a little extra protection for them? So we have made it to the end of the day. Thank God, I didn't think I was going to make it. I've been excited for days to end before, but never quite as excited as this one. My throat has had it. Turned out to be more than just a cold. Now I've got the back aches and the body chills. I'm going home to go to bed. we got to haul one more. Catching plenty of crabs. There go 
that was the last one. The only thing left to do now is clean the boat up, head in, get bait, get fuel, load the boat up with anything that we need for tomorrow, go home and go to bed. You can get on your shoulders. That'd be a good point of view. <laughs> if you sat on your shoulders while you wake up. You should let it bite. He doesn't weigh that much. He's pretty low. Alright, we're finished up. We are finally done. Headed home.